one-yard field goal attempt. The crowd is loud. Here is Colorado with everybody on the line of scrimmage. The snap to Stiggy. It's down. The kick is blocked. They blocked it. Colorado blocked the kick. Last week in the biting cold in Boulder, the Buffs blocked the Huskers' bid to claim sole possession of first place in the Big 8 Conference. Three games remain, and Colorado is still alive for its third straight league title. The Big 8 title's right there for us. We've got the best chance at the Big 8 title of the three teams that are contending for it. Challenging the Buffs today, the winless Oklahoma State Cowboys, a young team looking for respect and looking to destroy Colorado's dream of another Orange Bowl bid. Channel 4 Sports presents CU Buffaloes Football. Live from Lewis Field in Stillwater, Oklahoma. It's the University of Colorado Buffaloes versus the Oklahoma State University Cowboys. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Stillwater, Oklahoma, where Oklahoma began, they like to say around these parts. I'm Les Shapiro along with Dave Logan. And Dave, Oklahoma State head coach Pat Jones says we might be catching CU at the right time. What do you think about that? Well, I think uh, catching them at the right time and then doing something about that are two entirely different things. Certainly, Colorado cannot be expected to be at the emotional peak today as they were last Saturday night against Nebraska. So in that regard, I think he's right. But Oklahoma State's had a lot of trouble scoring, and because of that, the defense has started to break down. They'll have their hands full this afternoon. CU head coach Bill McCartney likes to come up with a slogan every week to motivate his team. This week, the slogan is, start fast in Stillwater. I think it's important for Colorado to come out uh, and establish themselves. Anytime you play a club that's looking for their first win, they can be very dangerous. And Oklahoma State does have some good football players, guys that are capable players of really hurting you. So I think it's important that Bill McCartney stretched that for his club to get off to a good start to take any momentum the Cowboys might have away quickly. See you, of course, fighting for the Big Eight title. Oklahoma State fighting for its first win of the year. And we'll be right back with the kickoff. Oklahoma State has just kicked off to the 14th ranked CU Buffaloes. Chris Hudson ran the ball back to the 20 yard line and that's where the Buffs will start with it. The quarterback for CU today as always, number three will be Darian Hagan. And a full house backfield behind him. Hagan comes out throwing deep. Tariko Smith intercepted by Oklahoma State. The very first play of the ball game. CU tries to throw it, and the Cowboys of Oklahoma State, Mike Clark, intercepts. The Colorado coming in felt like they would be able to get a play deep. You'll see the play action faking. The ball is a little bit underthrown. Rico Smith running past Mike Clark. The ball gets a lot of air underneath it, and Mike Clark, who, by the way, is the best defensive back the Cowboys have, makes a nice interception. Clark, an all-Big 8 performer last year, that's the third time this year that Darian Hagan has been picked up. The Buffs don't turn the ball over much, but they do on the first play of this game. For Oklahoma State, that's Kenny Ford at quarterback. And he comes out throwing. Incomplete, the intended receiver was Burt Milliner. Line up the Oklahoma State offense for you. It's an experienced front line. Matt Jose, Brian Bobo, Surrett, a four-year starter at center. Errett and Butler. Your backs and receivers. Ford at quarterback. Franks is the fullback. Kirksey, a very good receiver. Second and ten for Oklahoma State. The pitch goes to Russell Berrien. He's run out of bounds at the Oklahoma State 46. Let's line up the CU defense for you now. The defensive backs are figures Bradford, Hamilton, and the co-captain, Greg Thomas. And the front seven, Leonard Renfro, will not make the trip today. He is not here. Brian Diet and Marcellus Elder 
will play the defensive ends. The linebackers are Wolf Fork, Beaker, Ted Johnson, and Chad Brown. Third and six for Oklahoma State. Kenny Ford, a six foot, 195 pound senior from Port Arthur, Texas. at midfield to Mark Cheekwood, one of the flankers for Okie State. Ron Wolfork made the tackle. But the Cowboys are short of the first down, and they bring on the punt again. Kenny Ford is probably a better scrambler than he is thrower. This time, a two-man pattern. Really, nobody opens up, and Ford has to make a dangerous throw all the way back across the grain. Cowboys a bit short of the first down, however. Barry Vincent is the punter for Oklahoma State. He's had a couple blocked this year. Gets that one away cleanly, however. And that's Darian Hagan returning it for CU from his own five-yard line. Call it a return of about eight, nine yards. And the Buffs will try it once more on offense. Darian Hagan, the senior out of Los Angeles. CU's all-time, all-purpose yardage leader. Closing in on a couple of other bus records. Bill McCartney in his 10th year here at CU. Career record of 62 wins, 48 losses, and three ties. And we're going to take a break right now. We'll come back. CU has the ball. First and 10 for the bus. Kent Call runs the ball. Gets a couple yards out of that. Call it a three-yard gain. It'll be second and seven for the Buffs and Bill McCartney. Play action. Hagan looking to Charles Johnson. A nice play broken up by Scott Harmon. The sophomore from Holiday, Oklahoma. Colorado's trying to come out as you take a look at the offense. Hagan, K. Ronnell Cahill plays for Missouri. Westbrook, Warren, Rico Smith, and Sean Brown. And the offensive line with Anderson, Clint Moore, the freshman, Lewenberg, the senior, All American candidate, Roger Ivey, and Jim Hansen. Colorado's tried to come out and establish the passing game, and so far it hasn't worked. Third and seven. This is Lamont Warren with room to roam. Lamont picks up the first down up to the 29-yard line. Scott Harmon brings him down. And the Oklahoma State defense, you've got a pretty tough front four, and Andre Thompson, Brandon Colbert, Satterwhite, and Gildon. The linebackers are Woolridge, Noble, and Funches. And your defensive backs, Mike Clark, the Jim Thorpe candidate, Carlos Irving, Cornell Cannon, and Scott Harmon, who has five interceptions on the year. Lamont Warren tries it again. And he's thrown for a one-yard loss. Stacy Satterwhite did the throwing. Colorado offensively wanted to come out and try to get something going here this afternoon. Figuring if they could put some points on the board, it'd be very difficult for this Oklahoma State team to stay in the game. They're averaging less than eight points per contest, but so far they've played good enough defense to allow their team mentally and emotionally to stay in it. Hagan in the option. This is Lamont Ward. Turns the corner, gets it up to the 40-yard line. That should be another first down for the Buffs. Andre Thompson pushes him out of bounds. Well, Lamont Warren is one of the toughest kids. You look at Pat Jones, who's had his troubles this year. Warren, after dislocating his shoulder against Nebraska in the first half, told the trainer, Dave Burton, he wanted to come back in and play. And Burton, acknowledging that he's going to get his chance, knowing he couldn't hurt it further, told Bill McCartney, to his astonishment. First down for CU. Hagan. Almost intercepted again. The pass falls incomplete. Scott Harmon broke it up. It was intended for Rico Smith. Rico Smith coming off an angle injury. 
is going to see a lot of action today. He's already seen a lot of action. Cowboys, pretty much a two-deep zone team with the cornerbacks up on the wide receivers. They want to get a chuck and then release, and Colorado's tried to get the ball in between the corner and the safety twice. And both passes have been a little bit high and a little bit late, which have allowed Scott Harmon twice to almost make interceptions. Second and ten, Lamont Warren again. Brought down at the 43 by Jason Gilden. Call it a gain of three. Oklahoma State has struggled defensively all year, giving up 29 points a game, 389 yards a game. While the Buffs on offense have scored 30 points a game. Bill McCartney's team generating quite a few points this year. And they are 10th in the NCAA in rushing yardage, with 239 yards on the ground per game. Third and seven. But it looks like she recovers and there is a flag on the field. After Hagen fumbled, his left tackle, Craig Anderson, fell on the ball. Let's see what the Zebras say about that flag. But the call is a legal procedure. The fake lead draw, Hagen trying to get the screen pass to Lamont Warren, but the Cowboys do a good job of reading. The ball is stripped loose right there. Hagen loses it, and Brandon Colbert gets his left hand on it. And so far, the Cowboys have played very good defense here in the early going. And Mitch Berger will be punting for the bus for the first time all day. Scott Harmon. Let's the ball drop and it goes out of bounds at approximately the 25 yard line. Mitch Berger had a tough evening trying to punt the ball against Nebraska. Bill McCartney felt like because of the cold weather, Berger didn't continually punt on the sideline and may have tightened up a little bit. Stiggy, the Nebraska punter, punted the entire night, kicked on the sideline in front of the warmers and kept his leg warm. And Thus had a decent night kicking the football. It was cold. Oklahoma State with the ball on its own 25-yard line. Buffs intend to come out aggressive because Oklahoma State has a tendency to turn the ball over. Rafael Denson with a gain of five yards. He's their leading rusher on the year, averaging 3.9 yards every time he touches the ball. A parade All-American. He's a freshman out of Oklahoma, the uh, state player of the year last year in high school. Second and five for the Cowboys. They line up three wide receivers to the right of quarterback Kenny Ford. Stop the pitch to Denson again, but not quite as successful as the last play. In fact, he's thrown for a loss of a couple yards. So it'll bring up third and seven. That young man was the most highly recruited player out of Oklahoma last year, and Oklahoma State got lucky at that which hasn't been very easy to do because this program is in the third year of a three-year probation and recruiting has been very, very tough. In fact, they've been cut back five scholarships each year of the last three years. Third and seven. Ford has to hurdle his own man. And he still ends up losing two yards on the play. That brings up another punting situation for Oklahoma State. With 9.25 to go, we have no score from Lewis Field in Stillwater, Oklahoma. The defense is dominating so far. Barry Vincent, the punter, averages 34 yards on the air. Has room up the middle. Get 
Hudson and across midfield with a flag down. Hagan returns it down to the Oklahoma State 48-yard line. A little bickering going on right now. Players have to be separated by the officials. Field holds about 50,400, but it's far from sold out today. How many would you say are in the stands about now, Dave? Well, I don't know. I'm guessing 20,000, maybe 25,000. That might be a pine high. Of course, Oklahoma State looking for their first win of the year, and people tend to look toward basketball when football doesn't go very well. The Cowboys pick to finish first in the Big Eight by many this year. This is going to be a penalty against Colorado. I think they're trying to decide as to if it's post-possession or before the kick. Well, as you see, the call is holding. And also a personal foul against Colorado, so they will back up 15 yards on that. Which brings the Buffs back into their own territory. Pat Jones in his eighth year at Oklahoma State. A winning record, but the last three years have been very, very difficult. The three years of probation, Oklahoma State has gone four and seven, four and seven. And now this year, 0-7-1. Oh, well, the two penalties push the Buffs back. And back some more. Yeah, the reason they're marking off both penalties, the personal foul was after the whistle. It was a dead ball foul. So they'll penalize them for the holding initially and then mark off additional yardage for the personal foul. Looks like they're going to run some more back. A little confusion with the officiating crew. referee explaining things to Darian Hagan right now. Darian saying, why do we keep moving backwards? Well, that's why. <laughs> the penalty came after the whistle had blown, therefore there's going to be two mark off of yardage. Bill McCartney now talking with the referee. And I'm certain being explained the same thing. Well, when the play ended, the Buffs had the ball at the Oklahoma State 47-yard line. Right now, the ball is being placed at the Buffs 12-yard line. They've gone backwards 41 yards. I'm sure Bill McCartney is wondering what's going on also. We're going to take a break while the officials try to hash things out. We'll be right back in Stillwater. Well, while we were away, CU did run one offensive play. LeVon Warren ran it and gained about 10 yards on the play, but because of the penalties previous to the play, it's second down and 12 yards to go for the Buffs. Darian Hagan, at quarterback, after suffering a concussion last Saturday against Nebraska. Darian's okay now. Gives it to the first man through, James Hill, and he gets a couple of yards. Eric Garman, the tackle. Along with Wendell Gaines. Talking about James Hill, nice to see him up and walking after the shot he took in the Nebraska game on a reception down the west sideline. Hill really got flipped in the air and came down. Looked like he may have injured his neck, but just bruised ribs and a sore lower back. He's back in action. Third and ten for CU. Hagan looking deep again. Intercepted again. Cornell Cannon. Finally brought down by the Buffs in CU territory at the 44-yard line. Darian Hagan, who had such a wonderful game against Oklahoma State last year with four touchdown passes, is struggling today. Well, this is a play that Darian probably, after he watches it on film, will say, gosh, I should have pulled it down and run the ball. He takes a pop, but he throws the ball in the middle of the field. And when you're on the run, you pull up and you try to throw back into the middle of the field. There are a lot of places that you can go wrong. And nice interception that time by Cornell Cannon. 
Oklahoma State with the ball at the 43 of CU. And a nice pickup by Russell Berrien. Ronnie Wolfork finally brings him down. Colorado initially has done exactly what Bill McCartney feared most. They have turned the football over in plus territory, and they've allowed the Cowboy offense to work with a short field. Keep in mind, again, this team is averaging less than eight points per game, but if you let them work with 30 and 40 yards in front of them for a touchdown, you're asking for trouble. A nine-yard gain by Berrien on that last play, so it's second and one. And this is Berrien again. He picks up the first down and a little more. Down to the CU 29-yard line. Well, it's a coach's nightmare. The bane of their existence, turnover. Good running backs all have one thing in common, and that's great vision. And Barry in that time makes the nice cut, allows the wash to move in front of him. Bounces back into the hole from the weak side and got the first down. He's a freshman redshirt out of Midwest City, Oklahoma. Picks up the first down. Oklahoma State with the ball at the CU 30. Six and a half minutes to go, first quarter, still no score. Barry in again. With a little more room and a second effort, gets him down to the 26. A gain of four, Greg Baker at the tackle. Well, before the season started, Sporting News Magazine ranked the Oklahoma State offensive line as the 10th best in the country. So far, it's been a disappointing offensive line, but right now, they look pretty darn good. Second and six. Barry in again. This time hit quickly. Joel Steed in on the tackle, along with Ronnie Wolfork. Little change up in defense. Wolfork walks out onto the slot receiver, and then as the ball is snapped, he'll slide down, and that time was completely unblocked. Darian lost one yard that play. So the CU defense staring at a third and seven. As we told you earlier, Leonard Renfro, normally a starting defensive lineman for CU, didn't make the trip because of a bad hamstring. That pass almost intercepted by Eric Hamilton. He also got a hand on the ball to block it. I don't think the referee ever saw the football. He was going toward Kenny Ford to mark him down as if he'd been sacked, and Hamilton, behind him, almost made a great interception. Buffalo's blitzing from the corners. We're gonna look at this. And Hamilton almost makes a great interception, got his hands up on the ball. 44-yard field goal attempt by freshman Rick Myers of Oklahoma State. Just long one so far, this one is blocked. And CU picks up the ball, it's Ronnie Bradford. So CU picks up where it left off last week, blocking a Nebraska field goal attempt at the game against the Huskers, and today, blocking a field goal attempt, the first one of the day by Rick Myers. By the pressure in the middle last week against Nebraska, you can see the kick quite low. Tough to see as to who got it, but Bradford, had he been able to catch it there, and he was thinking about it, almost would have walked into the end zone. The kick is low, and that's Greg Thomas once again. Thomas right up the gut, got good penetration and the block. Last week against Nebraska, of course, Greg Beacon of CU blocked an extra point attempt. We'll feature that at halftime today. Meantime, CU on offense, Lamont Warren the carry up to the 39-yard line, call it a gain of six. McCartney roaming the sidelines, wondering right now, what do I have to do to get my kids motivated? He was a bit afraid of an emotional letdown after that game against Nebraska, as we told you before the game started. And he's experiencing it right now. 4.20 to go, 0-0 ball game. And the situation for CU, second down, six yards to go. Hit hard, Oklahoma State recovers a fumble. Yes, yes, Oklahoma State 
third turnover of the game in their favor. Mike Woolridge on the hit on the running play. Well, they'll try to sneak James Hill on the fullback lane. Watch number 47 deliver the ball. The ball goes in the air. And the Cowboys have their third turnover of the afternoon. And the nightmare continues for Bill McCartney. In the first quarter alone, three turnovers. And we're only a little more than halfway through this quarter. Oklahoma State with the ball in the CU 40. And they'll stay at the 40. No gain on that one. Russell Berry and hit hard and hit fast. Usually when you you suffer somewhat of an emotional letdown, your defense is the unit that falls short of expectations because they don't tackle as well and they more or less go through things half-heartedly. Today, the offense has been unable to really get themselves into the game. And turnovers will keep teams that don't have your talent very close. Second and ten for Okie State. A good rush put on by Wolfork, and he'll get the sack back in Oklahoma State territory at the 45-yard line. But well, Wolfork gets the sack here, but the reason is Beaker. Left side of the screen, Beaker jumps over the block. Ford sees him at his feet, tries to spin out, and Wolfork is right there. That is Ronnie Wolfork's eight-and-a-half sack of the year. He and Chad Brown coming into today's contest were tied with seven-and-a-half. He threw forward for a loss of 16 yards on that play. Third and 26. Ford overthrows the receiver that time. Greg Thomas was on the coverage. The intended receiver was Burt Milliner. But you can see why Oklahoma State has struggled this year offensively. You have to have somebody taking snaps that shows and plays with consistency and Kenny Ford the senior has been unable to do that Vincent again back to punt for Oklahoma State and Darian Hagan back to receive it for the buffs we've got 241 to go in the first quarter 0-0 no rush Hagan will run it back from his own 14 but not very far just a couple of yards on the return. We're going to take a break. It's 0-0 zero, zero in Stillwater. Back in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Look at the CU Buff sideline. Surprisingly close game early on. 0-0. Zero, zero. Colorado and Oklahoma State with 2.31 to go in the first quarter. And the Buffs have the ball. First man through is James Hill. Breaks a couple tackles. Excuse me, that wasn't James Hill. Scotty Phillips now in for Hill at fullback. You have to wonder if Hill is hurting a little after bruising those ribs last week against Nebraska. Nice pickup by Phillips. Well, Scott Phillips got most of his action against Oklahoma when James Hill did not make the trip. And the former tight end has turned out to be a pretty good fullback guy that gives him good leg drive and also an excellent receiver coming out of the backfield. This is Lamont Warren. He picks up about three yards. Getting up from the pile, one of the men to make the hit, linebacker Mike Woolridge. And that man, I would guess, has had a conversation with Gary Barnett and said, hey, let's run the football. We've had three turnovers in the first quarter. We've given them every chance in the world to stay in the game. Let's see if we can run the ball against a team that has given up a lot of yards on the ground. Yeah, why mess around? You're the 10th best running team in the nation. Almost 240 yards per game. And Oklahoma State is 0-7-1. You probably can run against them. Although you couldn't on that play. Lamont Warren with a gain of two yards. The crowd is small, but it's charged up right now. Helping that Oklahoma State defense.
Michael Westbrook now in the ballgame for CU, lining up at the top of your screen at a wide receiver spot. It's third and six. This time, Hagan will throw to Lamont Warren. He struggles to the 39-yard line. He's short of the first down. Mike Woolridge on the coverage and makes the tackle. Well, a play to get the ball in the flat to Lamont Warren, a safe pass, so you don't take any chances, but a pretty good job that time by Woolridge, 6'3 and 225-pound linebacker, who was right there to make the play as Warren tried to cut back for first down yardage. Mitch Perger on the punting duty for CU. That ball takes a CU bounce after a questionable punt by Berger. And it's down at the 22-yard line. Berger struggled a bit last week against Nebraska. Had a nice first punt today. But that one, well, hit it a little off. I'll tell you, punting, as Bill McCartney knows, is a lot like a golf swing. When you get in a groove, you just hit, hit the ball and it takes off. But when some little thing goes awry, your whole game goes right down the tubes and this team has got to have a good kicking game if they're going to win close games. Oklahoma State with the ball. 12 seconds to go in the first quarter. They try to run it up the middle. Roger Franks the fullback and Jeff Bruner makes the tackle. Roger Franks the ball carrier. Call it a gain of one, and that's the end of the first quarter. It's CU zero and Oklahoma State zero, and we're going to take a break. We're starting the second quarter in Stillwater. That's not a mistake. It's 0-0. Zero, zero. CU ranked 14th in the nation, expected to have a cakewalk today. But so far, it's been a struggle against a team with one of the worst records in the nation, Oklahoma State, 0-7-1. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan with you at Lewis Field. A field that put in some new art artificial turf in 1987. Trying to think, is there a, a field in the Big Eight that doesn't have artificial turf, or do they all have it down there? Well, they've made changes uh, over the years. Missouri used to have natural grass, as did Colorado for that particular point. But I think now everybody has natural yeah, grass. Yeah, I'm going through all eight schools in my mind, and I think they all do have Iowa State even used to have natural grass. <laughs> Not anymore. Second and nine for the Buffs at the start of the second, er, excuse me, for Oklahoma State at the start of the second quarter. Ford decides to keep it. And it's a good decision. Up to the 35-yard line, he picks up the first down. Greg Thomas runs him out. And another safe play. This is a design quarterback draw. And Kenny Ford, as we've talked about, is a much better runner than he is thrower. You'll see him go back. The buff with one linebacker in, Oklahoma State with three wide receivers, they draw the nickel coverage. And thus, Greg Beekert is the lone man behind the defensive line. And Kenny Ford, with his great speed, able to get around the corner and pick up yardage. Out of Port Arthur, Texas. He has suffered from inconsistency this year. He tends to throw the ball into coverage. Ten interceptions on the year, as opposed to just three touchdown passes. First down. He throws the ball that time. Incomplete. In and out of his receiver's hands. Greg Thomas gave him the hit. And again, you talked about his inconsistent throwing. In this case, he's a little bit late. And therefore, Robert Kirksey knows he's going to get hit. The arms don't extend the entire way, and he takes a pretty good shot from Greg Thomas. The rollout, Kirksey in the slot, the ball's got to be gone now. And he waits that last split second, and when Kirksey puts his arms out, he knows he's in danger. Although that pass should have and could have been caught. I'm surprised it wasn't. Kirksey normally a very sure-handed pass receiver. He's caught a pass in 18 straight games coming into today. In fact, Kenny Ford and Robert Kirksey had a very good game last year against CU. Ford threw for 219 yards and two touchdowns. Kirksey caught one of those touchdown passes. Right now being walked off the field, he was banged up on that play. Greg Thomas put a good hit on him. Yeah. 
Second and ten for Okie State. From their own 35-yard line. And flags fly. I think Brian Bobo made a boo-boo. <laughs> a five-yard penalty against the Cowboys. Bobo jumped off sides. He's their left guard. Pat Jones struggled the last three years under probation, but he is on solid ground here. Nobody calling for his head in Stillwater. In fact, a lot of people are calling for the heads of his assistant coaches. Well, when you're on seven, there's a lot of heads that have to go if you're one of the people that pays money to buy a ticket here. Second and 15. This is Berrien. He gets back to the line of scrimmage and a couple yards more. Call it a gain of seven. Eric Hamilton makes the stop. Marion has 315 yards rushing on the year. It'll be third and seven for Oklahoma State. Gorgeous day here in Stillwater. Nice, cool autumn day. About 50 degrees, hardly any wind. Fourteen minutes to go in the first half. Ford has room again. And gets it up across the 45. And it looks like first down yardage for the Cowboys again. Julian Hayward the stop. Well, again, when you play a guy like Kenny Ford, you have to stay in your rush lanes. And this time, Colorado did not do a good job. They're on a stunt. Wolfork in the inside. Beekert has to get outside and contain. And just a step slow, and that's easy when you play a kid that has terrific speed. Kenny Ford bounces it to the outside and picks up the first down yardage, and those are the kinds of plays that he has to make to sustain the drive because he's not going to beat you throwing the football. First down at their own 46-yard line, the Cowboys. Berrien, maybe one yard. Joel Steed in on the pile, making the tackle, as well as Ronnie Wolfork. And number 36 there is the freshman, John Knutson, the linebacker. Knutson and Ted Johnson filling in an inside linebacker for the injured Richard Fisher. Fisher out for the year, suffered a knee injury early on. And the two freshmen, Johnson and Knutson, have done a pretty good job filling in. Second and nine for Oklahoma State. Three wide receivers at the bottom of your screen. The pitch goes left to bury it. And Berrien goes far left, almost into the stands after that push. Chad Brown did the pushing. No gain on the play. Somebody, I believe, is a bit slow to get up after that collision near the wall. The stadium has walls surrounding the playing field, and they're fairly close. I think Chad Brown you see him being helped off might have been the one. But if you get a good head of steam going and run out of bounds, you're about 1.2 seconds from the wall. It's kind of like a race car driver. Chad Brown being walked off the field slowly. The junior out of Altadena. There that wall is. They probably painted after every year because you've got helmet marks <laughs> all over it. Different colors. Colorado gold and you've got Nebraska white, Oklahoma red. No gain on that last play. It'll be third and nine for the Cowboys. Ford looking downfield. That throw goes out of bounds, intended for Burton Milliner. A little high for Milliner. He's only five foot six, 150 pounds. Rodell Guest in the ball game for CU. Put some nice pressure on the quarterback from his linebacker position. And Oklahoma State in another punting situation. Barry Vincent, the punter. Darian Hagan will attempt a return. And Vincent gets off a beauty. Hagan back at his own nine-yard line. 
Boy, he tries to take it up the middle, but not very far. Sorry, Les, the reason people are booing, it looked like Hagen gave a free catch sign. He started, it looked like he started to wave his hand. I'll tell you, once you start, you got to go with it. And I think Hagen, let's take a look at it. I think that's a fair catch signal. You have to have it above your head, but you also cannot use any kind of movement that may throw off the defenders. And I think Colorado got away with one there. And the crowd continues to boo, Dave, because they agree with you. The score is still 0-0 in Stillwater. 12.37 to go in the first half. Neither team an offensive juggernaut so far. We were just handed some first quarter statistics. CU's total yardage, 64. Oklahoma State's total yardage, 11. And that's reflected in the score right now. Penalty flag on the field. Ball goes against CU, and it'll send them back to the nine-yard line. The Oklahoma State players on the field now trying to get the crowd roused, throwing their arms in the air. The crowd's not that big, so there's not much of a response, but those who are here are helping somewhat. Still first down, 15 yards to go for the Buffs. Three running backs lined up behind Hagen. And it goes to the last man through Lamont Warren, a gain of two yards. Stacy Satterwhite the tackle. Big kid, six foot six, 270 pounds. Voted all Big Eight last year by United Press International. Last one of the biggest challenges for a head coach or assistant coaches on the collegiate level is trying to gauge how your kids will come out and respond to any given situation. Uh, Bill McCartney knew last week that this team would give everything they had, emotionally would be into the game. He worried this week that what we've seen so far might happen. And with 18, 19, 20 year olds, I guess you never know. Second and 13. Hagan gives to the fullback, and he's stacked up quickly. Four orange jerseys, including Stacy Satterwhite. Surrounding the fullback, Scott Phillips. Well, you mentioned Satterwhite in the last play. He is very difficult to block for anybody. Number 52 right there, the senior. Been a starter, as you mentioned, for four years. And right now, the Cowboys feeling like Colorado is not going to throw the ball much in first and second down. Therefore, they've committed eight men to the line of scrimmage. Third and 11, a passing situation for Hagan. So far, he's completed one pass on the day to his own teammates and two passes to Oklahoma State. Two interceptions so far. This time, complete to his own man. That's Lamont Warren, who dances his way up across the 30 for a first down. Well, you've talked about Lamont Warren and his running ability. This is a pretty good catch by the freshman. The ball a little bit high. He's a guy that just glides into the secondary, and he can make a lot of people miss, as you see right there. Finally run out of bounds by Carlos Irving, but a big first down for Colorado. The Buffs from their own 31. 11 minutes to go, first half. The pitch to Warren. There's a fumble. Ball down on the field. A scramble, and Oklahoma State has gained its fourth turnover of the day. Cornell Cannon fell on that ball. Well, the reverse spin option, Darian's got to take this to the end man. He's got to take the ball a little bit further. Gildan was the man to force the pitch, and Hagen didn't get quite down the line far enough, and then Warren could not handle the pitch. And as you see, Colorado has committed their fourth turnover of the afternoon. And not to be redundant, but the only way to keep a team like the Cowboys, a winless team in the game emotionally, is to let them stay close in four turnovers, they can do it. Amazing thing about the turnover situation, in the last six games, the Buffs have turned it over just six times. Four times today, however. Oklahoma State. That's Rafael Denson breaking through the line. Down to the CU 10-yard line. Denson, in the mold of a Barry Sanders and a Thurman Thomas, the same kind of feet, low, compact, Break some tackles. He's going to be a fine player in this league for the next three years. Just a freshman. 
It's second and four for Oklahoma State. Their deepest penetration yet into CU territory. Benson again, stacked up quickly. Gain of one. Joel Steed the stop. Best defenses in the nation. The Buffs give up 12 and a half, yet 12 and a half points a game, I should say. Third and three. And Denson stopped quickly again. But I tell you, when you have an offense that's scoring less than eight points per game, one of the things you become is predictable. And Denson's had some success early today, so you figure he's going to get the ball that time Colorado comes through the, the holes and really gets him well before he has any chance to make the play Beaker with the initial hit. Rick Myers in Oklahoma State with a 28-yard field goal attempt. Their first attempt today was blocked. This time, Myers gets it up and gets it through, and Oklahoma State takes a 3 to nothing lead. 9.04 to go in the second quarter. We're going to take a break. The Buffs will get the ball back when we get back. The Oklahoma State Cowboys just taking a three to nothing lead over CU. And Buffalo brought along, or excuse me, the CU Buffaloes brought along Ralphie. Chips. Charles Johnson takes the kickoff from his own 17. And gets it up to the 31 of Oklahoma State. Todd Fisher brought Johnson down. Well, I don't see an overly worried expression on Bill McCartney's face. Not yet, anyway. We're still early in the ballgame. 8.58 to go in the first half. His team down by just three points. But it's a little bit like that old saying you don't see a duck really working either feet working below the water right the head's nice and even and looks like he's going but those feet are working like the dickens trying to get him around the pond i can promise you that bill mccartney would like to see his offense take command of this game and stop turning the football over well they have an opportunity right now first and ten from their own 30 yard line goes to the first man through and that's the fullback james hill back in the ball game this is just the second time all year Oklahoma State has scored first in a ball game. The only other time was against Arizona State, and that was a game Oklahoma State ended up losing 30 to 3. Second and five for the Buffs. This is Warren. Nice cut back across the 40 down to the 42. Carlos Irving brings him down. First down for Colorado. Warren, Warren picks has. up the first down on that play. And he has such tremendous leg drive. Irving just kind of grabs hold and goes for an extra two or three yards. Warren, by the way, 11 carries, just 40 yards this afternoon. But a first down on that play. The Buffs from their own 41. Hagan over the middle. Wide open Westbrook makes a nice one-handed catch into Oklahoma State territory down to the 42-yard line. Oh, what a great catch. Westbrook with his right hand. Here's the guy that Nebraska wanted to take out of the game. Make sure that Westbrook didn't get involved. This is just a seam pattern. Westbrook the wingback. Watch this crap. The right hand extended. That's about as good as you'll see in college football. Westbrook doing a great job filling in for the injured Mark Henry, who's missed the last three ball games with a bad knee. First down for the Buffs at the Oklahoma State 41. This is James Hill, a fullback with moves. Look at this. Cutting back two or three times and now carrying a bunch of orange shirts down to the five-yard line. Well, we've talked so many times this year about James Hill and how he is a fullback, but he has tailback mentality. You don't see him in the secondary 
and just happy to be there. He's a guy that wants to get to the goal line. A great move on Carlos Irving and then dragging about four Oklahoma State players towards the goal line. Now, here's what happened last Saturday night in Boulder. The catch by James Hill. Watch the collision, and Hill, oh, landed right on his neck. I really thought he was seriously injured, but he's not bruised ribs and a sore back, and he's feeling much better today after that run. First down, the reverse. This is Westbrook again, trying to shake a man, but finally brought down by Jason Gildon. Jason Gildon saw it coming and brings down Westbrook on the reverse. Jason Gildon, they thought last year, might be the defensive newcomer of the year as a freshman. I think had Westbrook stayed outside here, he might have been able to score. But he tried to come back inside, and Gildon was right there waiting for him. Gildon, by the way, has 11 and a half sacks. Close to breaking the school record held by Leslie O'Neill. Second and seven for the Buffs. Up the middle they go, but not very far. Stop for no gain is James Hill. Andre Thompson right there, number 93, the tackle. <laughs> 51-year-old Bill McCartney, this will put a few years on him. And Pat Jones, the head coach of Oklahoma State on the other side. Of him. He's just 44 years old. Third and seven for CU. We've got six minutes to go, first half. Hagan looking in the end zone. That pass knocked down by linebacker Arthur Davis. Boy, and Sean Brown was wide open in the middle of the end zone, waving his hands, and Darren Hagan just could not get the ball to him. He's three for eight on the afternoon with two interceptions. Not an auspicious start for Hagan today. The field goal unit comes out. This is Jim Harper with a 24-yard attempt. And he gets it. Almost blocked, but Harper gets enough height on it to put it through, and we have a tie ball game. It's 3-3 three three in Stillwater. Oh, that last drive by the Buffs to put him on the board for the first time today went eight plays and 74 yards, culminating in a Jim Harper field goal. We're tied up at Lewis Field in Stillwater, 3-3. Mitch Berger kicking off. Harmon back in the end zone, does the prudent thing, decides to down the ball, so Oklahoma State will have it at its own 20. Really, this is one of the few times this afternoon that Oklahoma State has not had excellent field position for their offense. Well, this is an offense that struggled all year for the Cowboys, as you see the crowd looking on. They are averaging less than eight points a game on offense. Compare and contrast that to the defense they're going against. The Buffs, eighth ranked in the nation. The Buffs give up just 12 and a half points a game. Kenny Ford throwing. Complete. That's Kirksey back in the ball game. He is across the 30 up to the 33-yard line. Kirksey with 30 catches on the year now. He has caught a pass in 19 straight games. Well, Kirksey's their best receiver, and this time it's just a nice, safe pass. Kirksey lined up tight, released the linebacker, and then went to the flat, picked up 13 yards in the catch, and he's a guy that the Cowboys want to get the ball into his hands. Uh, he's been here five years, and he's lived in the shadow of a couple of pretty good receivers. Curtis Mayfield, who happened to be drafted by the Broncos last year, and Hartley Dykes, the Big Eight's all-time leading receiver. First down, Ford again, complete to Burton Milliner. Up at the 44-yard line. Milliner, a real speedster, runs the 40-yard dash in 4.43 seconds. A junior college transfer, and that's how Pat Jones has tried to build this program back during the probation with junior college kids. But he's done that because you don't have that much time. You don't have enough time to wait for high school kids to mature and really step in and play. You figure those JC transfers can come in and help you right away. Another first down. This time they're on the ball. That's Franks, the fullback. 
call it a gain of three. Well, the bus is down. Chad Brown, I believe. He's had a tough day today. Had to come off the field once already after banging into that wall that's so close to the sideline. They're checking Chad's vision right now. I wonder if he took a blow to the head. I think Brown was involved in making the tackle and may have caught a knee right in the side of the head. Well, that's a big man to run into, Roger Franks. He's got big knees. 245 pounds worth. Doesn't run the ball much, but he runs it strong. Sophomore out of Kansas City. Chad Brown once again walks off under his own power. Let's see if he got hurt here. Take a look right side of the screen. You'll see Franks break through. There's Brown right there. And I would say, judging from that, it might not be a head, but a, a, a back injury. They have got knee right in the small part of the back, and that stings. He's a young cowboy fan. Kenny Ford, the Oklahoma State quarterback, has been more effective running the ball than he has been passing it, and now he's starting to get effective passing it. Last time, Franks. Loses one yard. So it'll be third and nine for Oklahoma State. The clock winding down. 4.30 to go in the first half. We're all tied up. 3-3. Play action. Over the middle complete. to Kirksey again and Julian Hayward the tackle. Flag down on the field. Let's see what this is all about. We've got a holding call going against Oklahoma State. I think you back them up here, although they're short of the first down. Fourth and two, they might go for it. So with an erratic offense and an offense that has not sustained so far, I think you take them back. That's exactly what CU decides to do. It remains third down, but it's a long way to go for Oklahoma State to pick up the first. Plus, if you add to that, that Colorado this year has given up three conversions and 51 tries when it's been third and more than nine. You can see the hole in the bottom of the screen, Ronnie, Ronnie Wolfwork held by Roger Franks. Not many teams, actually just three times, clubs have been able to convert on third down and long. Third and 24 is what it is. And Ford wants a timeout. He doesn't like what he sees in the CU defense. That's the first timeout taken by either team. Oklahoma State now with two timeouts left. CU has three. The man in the middle, Mike Gundy, with the, looks like a leather jacket on, was a great quarterback here a couple of years ago. He is now the receiver's coach. And that's a timeout. I'm not sure Pat Jones is not overly fond of, third and 24. There aren't many designs, not many plays that, as a head coach, you can say, well, here's what we'll do to pick up the 24 yards. This telecast is a copyrighted presentation of KCNC Channel 4 and the National Broadcasting Company. It's intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or retransmission of this telecast without the express written consent of KCNC Channel 4 is prohibited. And right now, CU will try to prohibit Oklahoma State from picking up big yardage on third down. It's third and 24. Oklahoma State goes the conservative route. Rafael Benson runs the ball. A few boos from the crowd, and Oklahoma State will have to punt. Joel Steed made the tackle. Steed having a pretty good game so far today. <laughs> yes, he is, and Pat Jones is beside himself. You can see the draw play, and this is what you have to figure a club that really 
doesn't throw the ball well down the field might do. Pat Jones is saying we wasted a timeout on third and 24 so we could run a draw play and lose five yards. Timeouts are much more precious than that. And that's when the offensive coordinator and the quarterback coach and the receiver coach, they hear it from the head man. Darian Hagan back to return for CU. Vincent, the punter, is averaging 42 and a half yards per punt today. And he shanks one off the side of his foot, but gets a gorgeous bounce. Hagan basically lets it roll out of bounds. And Oklahoma State gets a big break on that one because Vincent got a bad piece of the ball. Tomorrow's a big day for the Broncos when they take on the L.A. Raiders at Mile High Stadium. Channel 4 Sports and NBC will be there to bring you all the action with the kickoff at 2 p.m. It all starts tomorrow afternoon with Broncos Beat Sunday at 1 o'clock, followed by NFL Live with Bob Costas at 1.30 on KCNC Channel 4, the home of the Broncos. That'll be a good one. I'd say so. The Buffs with 3.07 to go in the first half. They're just getting the ball at their own 27-yard line. Let's see what they can do. Hagan on the option. He had two men surrounding him and still tried to get the pitch off to Lamont Warren. And the question is, really, is the pitch behind Darian Hagan? When Warren catches the ball, he's got to be behind Darian. Good job of riding the fullback down and then ducking up and an excellent block there by the wing back. Now, is this pitch behind Hagen when Warren catches it? I don't think so. The Buffs, fortunately, see the football go out of bounds. I don't know that I see a flag. Hagen has done this so many times. He's in the grass. The ball comes loose. No, sir. I think the officials are trying to decide where to place the ball because it was bobbled for about five yards. Well, it goes. It, it's placed where it goes out of bounds. In that case, it'll be up, I think, close to the 35, maybe a little bit more. 36-yard line. Well, that ball was pitched forward, and that is illegal. If they do place it at the 36, it means the Buffs picked up nine yards on the play. The official's talking it over right now. And they're going to move this ball back, it looks like. I don't think so. Well, no, they're keeping it right there. A nine-yard pickup. Uh, not a very pretty play by the Buffs, to be frank. But they'll take it. Second down, one yard to go. Ball is on their own 36. Hagen picks up the first down on the snake. We're under three minutes to go, first half. The score still 3-3. Three, three. Incomplete. And again, the timing of the route way off. Westbrook into the cut, ran a comeback, and was well into the break and out of the break before Darian Hagan ever delivered the football. Hagan on the rollout. About now, Westbrook is coming out of the break. And so this becomes a very tough throw when he's coming back that far. It almost makes a terrific catch. Hagan, three of nine. Tough first half for the senior all big eight candidate. Normally a 55 percent passer. Today in the first half, just 33 percent. It's second and ten. They try it again. This time, Charles Johnson complete in Oklahoma State territory down to the 42-yard line. Cornell Cannon brings him down. And this throw is easily Darian's best of the first half because he had to get the football up and over Cannon. Number 23 is in the passing lane. This ball will go up, as you see, over his head, and then a pretty good adjustment by Charles Johnson as he got both hands in the football and picked up the first down. Charles Johnson out of San Bernardino, California. Just a sophomore. Another first down for the bus. And another reverse. Hagan going downfield. Double coverage. And fortunately for Hagen, he overthrew that ball. There's a penalty flag on the field. <laughs> There's about four of them. One of them is going to be, I think, illegal lineman downfield. And the other, your guess, is as good as mine. 
Those guys are reaching their back pockets faster than I can count them. You know, they sometimes get real excited when they see this, and they can't get the flag out and they reach them back there and the flag sticks. Man, they went after those things. Right, Bill McCartney came into this game hoping to stay conventional on offense. He didn't think he'd need any of the plays from the trick bag against Oklahoma State, but it's a tough game, and he's going to the tricks. There's the illegal man downfield. That's a clip call. <laughs> Three penalties against the bus. And a triple dipper. I mean, I don't know that you can make any more mistakes on one particular play. The toss to Warren, hands back to Westbrook. The clip right there. Tough to see as to who did it. Hagan can't get it. Now he does and says, what the heck? Let's air this baby out. One of our people in the truck, Terry Travato, says they were called for everything but bad breath. I'll tell you, if you get close enough to them, they might have got called on that one, too. <laughs> the, the reason they probably weren't called for that, they ran out of flanks. I mean, nobody else had anything to throw. Then you start throwing your hat, your cap goes down. Gloves, yeah. anything you have on your body. And all Bill McCartney could do is smile, as you saw on the sideline. Darian Hagan struggling through the day. Four complete in ten tries. So he used fourth penalty of the first half here. 42 yards has cost him. <laughs> They're back in their own territory at the 43-yard line. The situation, 2-10 to go in the first half. Second and 25 in a tie game. The pitch to Warren. And a gorgeous tackle by Cornell Cannon. Throws Warren up into a flip for a loss of one yard. And a good job by Cannon. He fights off the block by Westbrook. Westbrook, number 81, will throw at the feet of Cannon. We can't see it, but you'll see Cannon reappear. And what he does, Warren tries to avoid him, but simply can't. And that's why football players spend so much time strengthening their neck muscles, because of plays like that. Third and 24 for the bus. Less than two minutes to go in the first half. A good rush flushes Hagen, and he keeps it up to the 48-yard line. Far, far short of the first down, and CU will have to give it up one more time in this first half. And that was a good decision by Darian Hagen. Bought himself some time, came to the sideline. We've got an injured buck. Nobody opened up, and therefore Hagen had to pull it down. That's Charles Johnson, who's hurt. Halftime score in Lawrence, Kansas. The Jayhawks 20. The Cornhuskers 17. My goodness. CU, of course, tied with Nebraska at the top of the Big 8 standings. And praying that somebody knocks off the Huskers before the conference schedule is finished so the Buffs can go on to the Orange Bowl for the third year in a row. Number of CU fans very concerned with Charles Johnson on the field right now needs to be helped off. You sure the Nebraska scores right at the half? 20 to 17, Kansas beating the Huskers. Well, maybe the Buffs ought to be told that, and that'll motivate them a little here. Maybe the Huskers ought to be told that in Lawrence, Kansas, that Colorado more than likely is going to be tied at best with Oklahoma State. You'll have a couple of fired-up teams in the second half. Works both ways. Mitch Berger to punt for the Buffs. A low one. That'll give Harmon a chance to return, but he decides to let the ball bounce, and it's going to bounce all the way back to the goal line where the Buffs down it. So with a minute 34 to go, Oklahoma State will start with the ball at its own one-yard line. Sunday nights are your sports nights on KCNC Channel 4. Immediately following the News 4 Late Edition at 1035, it's the Bill McCartney Show with our very own Dave Logan, the man standing next to me. They'll bring you all the highlights and analysis of today's game, along with a look ahead to next week's game against Kansas. And then right after the McCartney Show, it's Sports Extra with Gary Miller. And Gary and producer Pat Berry have dedicated the full 20, 25 minutes to the Man Magic Johnson saga. Oklahoma State from its own one-yard line. Looks like they're going to be content 
to let the clock run out. Oh, I, I think Colorado's going to try to stop it. They've got three timeouts left, and they can get some good field position out of here. You see Lamont Warren holding that shoulder. Or it's being held for it. He had a slight dislocation of that shoulder against Nebraska. Looks like he's re-injured it. Oklahoma State gained two yards on that play. Did the Buffs use a timeout here? Yes. Yes, they have. So they have two timeouts left in this half. Oklahoma State would be happy to let the last minute 29 of this half wind down unscathed because they're backed up against their own goal line, but the Buffs are going to make a last-ditch effort to squeeze some points out of this half. Oklahoma State cheerleaders not playing to a full crowd but it's been a good raucous crowd for the Cowboys so far they didn't expect this a three to three tie with a team that's ranked 14th in the nation the CU Buffs this is a good look at Lewis Field Again, the handoff to Berrien. He gets maybe a yard out of the play. The dilemma for Pat Jones on third down and about seven, do we throw it, which is not their forte, although a team that scores less than eight a game might, maybe doesn't have a forte, or do we run the football, probably not pick up the first down, but force Colorado to use their last timeout? That will give uh, the Buffs about a minute and 20 seconds to work with. No timeouts, and it looks like they might get good field position, too, if they can stop them here. Well, let's not even jump ahead that far. If they can force Oklahoma State to punt, you've got the punter back in his own end zone, and he's had a couple of punts blocked this year. That's right. And it's tough as an offensive coordinator when you don't have many guns. To get into a shootout with the OK Corral. Cowboys six times this year have scored less than seven points. They only have six touchdowns all year. Yep. And can you imagine just three years ago when Barry Sanders was oh. winning the Heisman Trophy, they were averaging 47 and a half points a game. Yep. Lost two games. They were 10 and 2. Lost to the Sooners. Here in Stillwater, 34 to 31, lost to the Cornhuskers in Lincoln, 63-42. But they put some big numbers up on everybody, including Colorado. What a downhill slide since 1988. And again, that's what probation will do to you. Some people say a three-year probation like that is akin to the death penalty. Ford trying to go deep to Milliner. It is intercepted. Yes, it is intercepted by the Buffs. Boy, Dion figures. Yeah, Dion figures, I think, lulls Milliner to sleep. He's watching Milliner, and then as he turns back, figures just goes up and takes the ball away. That's a tremendous catch by a defensive back. That would be a great catch by a wide receiver as he's battling for position to reach back and get the football with two hands. Dion figures with a huge play. That's Dion's fifth career interception here at CU, his first of the year. Hagan to Westbrook. Fumbles the ball. Are they going to call it down? Yes, they're saying the ground caused the fumble. So CU will retain the ball at the Oklahoma State 31-yard line. Westbrook on the field, rolling around as if he's hurt. Mike Woolridge put the hit on him. Well, this ball gets to Westbrook in a hurry. That's a bullet. Westbrook, so adept at breaking tackles. The ball looks like it's down, and it, it almost looks like he landed on his right shoulder, although Westbrook appeared to be grabbing his leg. But when your right shoulder, or any sh either of the two shoulders, hits the ground first, that's how you can separate it. Very worrisome situation for the Buffs on offense right now. Michael Westbrook being helped off the field. Lamont Warren has gone to the locker room after being helped off the field. 
And Charles Johnson, another wide receiver, has been helped off the field. Westbrook breaks a lot of tackles. See how he lands with his elbow hitting first on the turf. We'll wait and see what it is, but they're holding his left arm out. And I'm going to stick my neck out and say that was a questionable call. Westbrook might have fumbled that ball before he hit the ground. But it doesn't matter. CU keeps it. Kent call. Inside the 30-yard line. Down to the 27. Chaucer Funches the tackle. 52 seconds to go. First half. The Buffs trying to get the ball in the end zone. If they can't do that, they are in field goal range. Hagan on the run, intercepted. His third intercepted pass of the day. Intercepted by Arthur Davis. The Oklahoma State backup linebacker. Had the fifth turnover of the day for Colorado, and this is just an ill-advised throw by a guy who's been through a lot of battles. He's trying to get the ball to Sean Brown. Brown is open. But again, when you're running right and you try to throw back left across the grain, you're asking for trouble. And Hagan, even with a marvelous arm, is unable to fit this ball in. Davis cuts underneath Sean Brown, and that's the third interception, as I mentioned, the fifth turnover by Colorado in the first half. Oklahoma State, this time content to run the clock out. 30 seconds to go, first half. So it looks like we're going to go into the locker room with a tie. It's three to three right now. Clock winding down. Less than 15 seconds to go. Oklahoma State's going to let it run out. The Cowboys are already headed for the locker room. Three to three in Stillwater, Oklahoma, a Cowboys team that has yet to win a ball game, holding down the 14th ranked team of the nation. Let's go to the field and Mark McIntosh. Well, we were trying to get Coach Bill McCartney, but he walked off obviously not at all happy with what has happened in the first half. I think he's probably as, as concerned about the injuries to Warren Westbrook as he is the five turnovers and the 3-3 three, three score. Back up to you guys. Yeah, there is plenty to be concerned about. McCartney will get across his concern in the locker room, I'm sure. It's 3-3, three to three, Colorado and Oklahoma State. We're going to halftime. Logan, Les Shapiro and Dave Logan back with you in Stillwater, Oklahoma. You see the score, 3-3, three to three, Colorado and Oklahoma State. CU's streak of 19 straight conference ball games without a loss in jeopardy right now and we're going to take a break come right back give you some first half stats and highlights well, we're two minutes away from the second half kickoff let's throw some first half stats at you right now there's the most important stat game tied three to three well, offensively the buffs haven't done too badly right on the line 187 yards total offense you see in the middle of the left column, but only three points out of that. Oklahoma State has held on to the ball more than CU today, mainly because CU has turned the ball over. That should say five times, not four times. Yeah, that, that obviously the key stat. You look at what the Cowboys have done offensively, they've got 73 yards of total offense. Uh, this is a club that averages about 270 per game, not an offensive juggernaut. So the CU defense has played well enough not only to be in the game, but to be ahead. The problems have come offensively. You can't turn the football over and give a team an important amount of opportunities to stay in the game and maybe take the lead. Well, another problem CU's had today is a couple of key offensive players have been hurt. Westbrook and Ward. Here are some other scores from around the country. Air Force right now leading Army at the half, 3 to nothing. Wyoming and Brigham Young are tied up at 7 in the first quarter.
Nebraska just hanging on against Kansas. They're still playing in the third quarter. Nebraska up by just four points. I'm sure the Buffs know about that score. Somebody let them know at halftime in the locker room. Maybe give them an extra charge here to get going against Oklahoma State. Oklahoma having no problem with the Missouri Tigers in the second quarter. Oklahoma 21 to nothing. And Kansas State beating Iowa State in the second quarter, 17 to 7. Let's go down to the field to Mark McIntosh for some thoughts now. Mark? Thank you, Les. Update some injuries. Lamont Warren has dislocated that same shoulder he hurt last week against Nebraska. Lamont will not return. It's not more severe than last week, but it's not Nebraska. They're going to hold him out of this ballgame. Michael Westbrook has injured his right arm near the elbow. He should play in the second half. Back up to you guys. All right, thanks, Mark. There's a look at Darian Hagan, really struggling offensively today. I can't remember the last time Hagan had a game like today. He's thrown three interceptions in the first half alone and fumbled the ball away once. There are his throwing numbers. He's just completed five passes and 12 attempts for 72 yards, and the big number there on the far right. Bill McCartney, boy, I'd have paid to hear that halftime speech. The Buffs kicking off. Mitch Berger into the end zone, and Oklahoma State will down it and start with it at their own 20-yard line. Let's go down to Mark McIntosh. He knows what Mac was saying in the locker room at halftime. Mark? Well, actually, Les, it's kind of surprising. Uh, talking to some of the guys down here, Mac didn't have a whole lot to say. He was pretty calm at halftime and just went in and said, hey, take care of business in the second half. This is going to be our 20th consecutive league victory. So, uh, you know, a lot of people might have expected him to go in there and uh, chew on some guys a little bit, but that wasn't the case. He was pretty soft-spoken and just said, go out there and take care of them. Well, thanks, Mark. Now I'm glad I didn't pay for it. <laughs> Wouldn't have gotten my money's worth. We're starting the second half. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan with you in Stillwater. And first play from scrimmage. Raphael Denson brought down by Greg Beekert, a gain of two yards. Cowboys trying to change things up. They go without a huddle. They see you scampering to get back on defense. As surprised as we are, this is Denson breaks through across the 30 to the 34. Heck, I don't think I'd ever huddle again. Denson on the toss. And the Cowboys caught the bus really overshifted to the strong side. Colorado trying to scurry and get in position, and by the time they did, the ball was snapped, 13 yards of the carry. That's Denson's longest of the afternoon. As we told you earlier, last year in high school, the Oklahoma Player of the Year. First down for Oklahoma State from their own 35-yard line. Forward to the junior college transfer, Burton Milliner. Milliner has the kind of speed that you want to take advantage of every chance you get. Just give him the football and allow him to utilize his athletic skills. Chris Hudson knocked him out of bounds, but he can fly. 5'6 and 150 pounds, and when you're that size, you better be able to run. And he can. Second and two for the Cowboys. First man through the fullback. He'll be close to first down yardage. Brian Diet makes the tackle. The former All-Stater out of Pomona High School. Roger Franks, the fullback, trying to pick up first down yardage there. It's going to be close, and they're going to measure it. Oklahoma State, despite an 0-7-1 record, still returned more starters to this year's team than did CU. Oklahoma State and Franks pick up the first out on that play. The question is the quality of those starters. Obviously, CU is better. And CU with a better record, 5-2-1 on the year. The problem with Oklahoma State offensively has been their consistency. Their ability to hang on to the ball, not turn it over. And the fact that they have a very inexperienced set of running backs. A 
That's why they're averaging less than eight points a game. This is Rafael Denson once again. Gain of a couple yards. Beaker tripped him up. But Greg Beaker has improved during the course of his career. And he's a guy that just seems to have a sick sense as to where the running back's going to cut. That time, maintains his position, waits for Denson to bounce outside, and he scrapes right off the defensive tackle and is there to meet him. Oh, nice to see linebacker Chad Brown back in the ballgame for CU. He had to be helped off the field in the first half. Looked like a rib injury, but he's back now. And it's second and eight. That pass complete to L.G. Thompson, freshman out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Short of the first down. Third down situation for Oklahoma State now. We just began the, the second half. Third down, six yards to go for the Cowboys. Ford over the middle, incomplete. The intended receiver was Kirksey. And Ford threw it far behind him. So Oklahoma State will have to punt. Barry Vincent is the Cowboys punter. And Darian Hagan has been returning punts for the Buffs all afternoon. He'll do it again right now. Hagan averages 13.3 yards on a punt return. He is 10th in the NCAA and first in the Big Eight. He will not get a chance to return this one. Once again, Oklahoma State and Vincent, not a very good punt, but a great bounce. And the ball is still rolling. And finally stops ball is down at the 10-yard line. Dave, I don't see a lot of fire in CU's eyes, and I think they need to generate some before this afternoon gets too late. Well, th this game to me is one that is there for the taking. If Colorado can put a touchdown on the board, I think it will deflate the Cowboys a bit because they can't score many points. But the offense has got to get it in gear, take care of the football, and just go about their business. Hagan on the option. Keeps it. And gets three yards. Going back to the point you were just making. Historically, at least this year, when Oklahoma State is not back early, it tends to sap them of their energy and their strength and their enthusiasm. Sure. And, 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 and they go quickly into the tank. Well, that's the case for any team that has yet to win a game. I mean, you, you can emotionally only expect so much from them. They will continue to play hard as long as they feel like they're in the game. The key for Colorado is to get their defense on the field when the game is on the line in the fourth quarter. Second and eight, Hagan complete. That's the tight end, Sean Brown. First down yardage and more across the 30-yard line to about the 32. And the Buffs have run this play many times this year. They fake the counter trade to Kent Call. Now, Brown has the option of hooking up in the first soft spot that he sees once he crosses the center. And Sean Brown has tremendous hands. Gat has made many tough catches during the course of this football season. And now he's got him a first down. Sean out of Granada Hills, California. Buffs from their own 32. This is the fullback. About three yards. That's what I was saying a couple of minutes ago about getting their defense on the field when the game's in the line. The defense today is the best unit Colorado has. And Oklahoma State has not done anything to prove they can move the football on a consistent basis. So you want the lead when the game comes down to the end and your defense on the field. You don't want to be protecting a tie game, however. Second and seven after that James Hill three-yard run. Straight ahead is Kent Call. Gain of two, maybe three yards. Arthur Davis, the tackle. Davis having a pretty good game for Oklahoma State. He has one interception. He's also knocked down a pass by Hagan.
crowd getting louder as the day goes on. Not close to capacity. In fact, about half of the 50,000 that this place can hold. But they're getting louder as they see Oklahoma State has more of a chance. That time, Hagen's pass is dropped by James Hill. And the Buffs will have to punt. Well, this time, Mitch Berger has the wind at his back. And it's a wind that's picked up as the day has gone on. Pretty stiff breeze right now. Harmon back to receive it. Berger with a low kick. Not a very good kick. And Harmon has a chance. But is brought down at the 24-yard line. We've got a timeout on the field. We'll take a break also. The score is tied at three. Well, speaking of music, Stillwater, Oklahoma happens to be the home of one of country and western's hottest bands, Garth Brooks. We drove by his house. Yeah. Waved? He didn't wave back. First and ten for Oklahoma State. The pass is complete. This is LG Thompson again. Across the 35-yard line. And he has another Oklahoma State first down before Eric Hamilton bangs him up pretty good. And again, the key here, easy passes from Kenny Ford. Not much risk in a pass like this. L.G. Thompson blocks the bases to the outside, spins off the initial hit by Deion Figures before Eric Hamilton can bring him down. You're not going to get a lot of drop back passing throwing the football down the field 15 to 20 yards. You're going to get a lot of what you just saw. Safe, easy throws by an inconsistent quarterback. 9.25 to go, third quarter tie game. Oklahoma State with the ball on its own 37-yard line. Ford with time. Pass intended for Milner. Broken up nicely by Dan Figures. Figures already with an interception today. He had a bit of a shot at that one. Instead, broke it up. Well, if this team is going to hurt you, it's going to hurt you with the passing game. We've got a couple of good receivers in Milliner and Kirksey. The guy right there who might be able to get it to him. This time they run the ball. Flag down. Even the referee is down. Let me come out. They're going to fumble. Let's see what happens when they address that pile there. You see Pat Jones not happy with it. I think it's going to be the illegal procedure against Oklahoma State. Defined. First down. Yes. You see, that's the call. That may be what the Colorado offense needs to get on track. Kenny Ford is not ready for the football. And Pete Surrett said, hey, I'm going to give it to you. Ford is calling an audible when the ball hits his hands. And the Buffs have a big turnover. Buffs with the ball at the Oklahoma State 37. Darian Hagan, at quarterback. Decides to run. And he gets it down to the 26-yard line of Oklahoma State, a gain of 11. And this is what Darian Hagan, who has had a tough first half, can do for you. The sprint out, everybody is covered. They try to get Westbrook toward the sideline. Charles Johnson on the hook. Nobody was open. And Hagan just pulls it down and gets them a first down. Hagan, by the way, six carries only for 18 yards, but that his longest of the day. I just see the way he switched hands like a true running back. Went from the right hand to the left hand before he was tackled. From the 26, this is Kent Call. Tries to get inside the 20 on the second effort. Call it a gain of six. Scott Harper the tackle. 
unless Colorado can take, I think, full control of the game. You don't like to say that in the middle of the third quarter if they score a touchdown, you're up by seven. But based on what we've seen, they can really establish themselves. Kent Call, between the tackles, is going to be a solid football player for you. And you might as well get ready to hit him, because if you don't, he's going to find you and hit you. He's got those strong legs. He participates in the long jump for the CU track team in the offseason. Second and four. Call again. Spins his way down to the 16. He'll be close to first down. Jason Gild in the tackle. I can't call start of the year as the Buffs starting tailback. He has since lost a job to Lamont Warren. Not because Call wasn't running the ball well, just that Warren started running it better. And to Call's credit, has made a peep about it. Good kid. Well, football teaches you a lot of things. One of which is patience. You'll get your chance. You'll get your opportunity. You just have to keep your head up and keep working hard in practice. And Ken Call certainly has. He does pick up the first down there. So it's first and ten for the Buffs. They're down to the Oklahoma State 16-yard line. Less than eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Your screen says third and one. The scoreboard here at Lewis Field says first and ten. And Call takes the ball inside the 10-yard line. It was a first down play, and now it will be second down. See, if I'm free safety, Scott Harmon here, I hate to see number seven in the game because I know that he's not going to try to make me miss. He's going to try to run over me. And that is exactly what Ken Call did. Call, five carries for 21 yards, and you can get eight yards on first down. You're in good shape on second and third. And the Buffs aren't fooling around anymore. They're just coming right at him, Dave. Second and three. Call again. Right at him. Down to the one-yard line. <laughs> and guess who makes the stop? Scott Harmon, the free safety. It's hard tell his kid. Probably telling his linebackers, hey, fellas, how about slowing him down before he gets to me behind James Hill? A good block there, and here comes Kent Call, Lewenberg downfield, bam, into Scott Harmon, who made a pretty good tackle there as he stood Kent Call up. First and goal from the one-yard line. Kent Call doing most of the work here. Let's see if he gets it again. This time it's James Hill, and he's racked up for no game. Michael Westbrook. The Buffs wing back shaking up on the play. He's already come off the field once today. And he'll come out being replaced by Christian Faria. Freshman redshirt tight end. Look at James Hill, the fullback. Well, you'd almost expect him to get the ball on second down and one yard to go from the one yard line. Flags on the field. Oklahoma State kids cheering as if it's a penalty against CU. Let's see. Illegal procedure, flight, second down. The call is in fact against the bus, and that'll set them back five yards, back to the six-yard line. But Pat Jones stalks those sidelines. If anybody stalked, if he had a dollar for every step, he'd be a rich man, wouldn't he? Second and six. The option. By the linebacker, Mike Woolrich, the junior out of Kansas City. Darren Hagan does the right thing here. He doesn't make the pitch. He tries to stretch the defense down the line of scrimmage, but Woolrich fights off the block and gets way too much penetration. Sean Brown, trying to block Woolrich, lost that battle, and the bus lost big yards. Four yards to be exact. One point, they had the ball at the one-yard line, first and goal. Right now, it's third and goal from the 10. More pressure. Hagan, touchdown, Bucks. Rico Smith. Boy, talk about threading the needle. Darian Hagan did a good job on that one. He found Rico Smith in the corner of the end zone. 
for the first touchdown of the day by either team. And again, Darian Hagan's escapability. Here's Rico Smith isolated. It makes a nice scoop catch. That was close, but Smith looked like he got both hands underneath the football. Hagan with the escapability makes that play happen. Jim Harper, the extra point. It's there. And the Buffs with their first lead of the day. They're up 10 to 3 on Oklahoma State. Well, Colorado with its first touchdown of the day. A pass from Darian Hagan to Rico Smith. And the Buffs take a lead 10 to 3. We've got 5.06 to go in the third quarter. The Buffs kicking off. Once again, Mitch Berger will not allow the Cowboys to run this back. They have yet to run a kickoff back all day. I made the comment about Darian Hagan doing a good job of escaping the initial rush on his touchdown throw. Watch what he does here. Straight drop back pass. He's looking. Now he feels the pressure, buys himself some time, and yet realizes the downfield Rico Smith is open. And that's a fine catch. The ball low. Receivers don't mind the ball being down low because... It's a safe place for you to catch it. Eight plays, 37 yards, and a little over four minutes off the clock. And it followed a fumbled ball by Oklahoma State. A turnover. Right now, State with the ball again. Play almost busted. Instead, the fullback, Roger Franks, turns it into a nice gainer. They almost didn't make that connection, did Well, Franks, who you said doesn't get the ball much or has it in the past, in the one-back set, will run right through the arm tackle of Eric Hamilton. Let me take that back. That's not an arm tackle. Hamilton hitting pretty good, and yet, as you see, 242 pounds, that calls for extra help. Freight train right there, Mr. Franks. Picks up the first down. Oklahoma at its own 30-yard line. Pressure. Ford gets it away. Intercepted by Ted Johnson, the freshman's third interception this year, and he fumbles the ball. It looks like Oklahoma State got the ball back. Ted Johnson with the interception for the Buffs, but can't hold on. Watch Kenny Ford. He will eat one of the CU Buffs. Right side is Chad Brown. The ball way underthrown. And Ted Johnson, who had a big interception in Norman, Oklahoma, loses it after he's hit, and the Cowboys do have it back. You won't see many plays like that. Ted Johnson looking downfield. See, linebackers think they're running backs from time to time. He's got that ball covered up with both hands. It still pops up. He was watching film of Greg Binkert from last week. Yeah. <laughs> he could get to the end zone also. So Oklahoma State with a first and ten. That's Rafael Denson. It's about four yards on the play. Beaker at the tackle. Ted Johnson made the interception, which meant CU owned the ball. So when Oklahoma State got it back on the fumble, they get an automatic first down there. Second and seven. Under four minutes to go, third quarter. The Buffs lead it 10 to 3. Mark Cheatwood in motion. This is Denson. Spins away, but not very far away. Up to maybe the 28-yard line. Darius Holland in the ballgame now for the Buffs at defensive end, and he makes the tackle. Now take a look when we can at number 92 in the white jersey. Darius Holland, and for Colorado fans, enjoy him now, and you will later. He'll come from the bottom of the screen, right side. Denson with a nice spin move. Number 92 will come into the screen. He's a true freshman, 6'4", and 275 pounds. And he is a kid that this coaching staff is very, very excited about. Holland out of Las Cruces, New Mexico, where he was the player of the year last year. Third and four, complete to Cheatwood. Oklahoma State, another first down. And it's on 45-yard line. Cheatwood will run just a seat pass. Separation between the linebacker drops and the secondary coverage. That time Kenny Ford able to fit the football in and gives the Cowboys a first down on the 43. There's a dead spot in his own defense between the
the linebackers in the secondary, but you have to close that down a little more than CU did on that play. And Dave, you tell your receiver to go into that spot and just oh, run sure. around until you're open. Just settle down. Four complete. A gain of oh, three yards. Dimitri Markham made the catch. His first catch of the day. Another freshman. This Oklahoma State team is full of freshmen and junior college transfers. And that a direct result of being on probation for the last three years. Second and six. Good pressure from Marcellus Elder. Earthquake brings him down. Ford does just get rid of the ball for an incomplete pass. Kenny Ford is 8 of 18 for 68 yards, although not, as we've said, a great thrower. Last year, he was 15 of 33 for 219 yards and two touchdowns against Colorado. So he has had his moments here in Stillwater. And that's the problem. He hasn't had enough of them. If there's a, a criticism of Ford, it's that he's terribly inconsistent, throws into coverage too much. Third and six. Three wide receivers on the right side. Ford tried to hit Kirksey, one of those receivers, but it's incomplete. And it's a putting situation for Oklahoma State. And the Buffs gamble that time that Oklahoma State will not be able to pick up the blitz. Harry Camelton coming to the strong safety blitz. Looks like he may have injured his right hand. Kirksey has to make that catch. That's one that is a wide receiver. You trot off the field, shaking your head and say, ooh, gotta have that one. Very Vincent to punt. It's a low kick. Barry and Hagen can't do anything with it. It rolls inside the Buffs 20-yard line down to their 18. And that's where CU will start with it. We're going to take a break in Stillwater. The score, CU, 10-3. to 3. Wes Shapiro and Dave Logan in Stillwater, Oklahoma with you. CU leading Oklahoma State, 10-3. to 3. The Bucks have the ball at their own 18-yard line. We have less than two minutes to go in the third quarter. Not much on that running play. Maybe a yard, maybe two. That was Kent Call, brought down by Brandon Colbert. A number of bowl officials here in Stillwater to watch the CU Buffs play. A lot of possibilities for CU. A lot of bowls interested in the Buffs. Of course, if they don't go to the Orange, Fiesta Bowl has some interest. Hall of Fame Bowl in Tampa, Florida. The Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. And the Hancock Bowl. The John Hancock Bowl in El Paso. Darian Hagan wants to throw but doesn't have a choice in the man. Brought down for a loss of two yards by Jason Gilden. Give Gilden credit for a sack. He now has 12 and a half sacks on the year. You see, talking about Orange Bowl possibilities, yeah, Nebraska see. leading Kansas. You see the Cornhuskers ahead by eight. At halftime of both of these games, here in Stillwater and in Lawrence, I would imagine Steve Nash won the Orange Bowl because he were near suicidal. Both of the Big Eight leaders in jeopardy of losing. Third and ten. They almost get to hanging again. And they finally do. At about the 27-yard line, he's going to be just short of the first down. Chaucer Funches brings him down. Hagen has been doing this most of the afternoon. There he avoids Gilden, and then he's into the secondary. Just a little bit short of the first down, but Hagen, unlike the first half, has made good decisions here in the second. CU takes its first time out of the half. That means the Buffs have two left to work with. Bill McCartney talking with his punting unit. What could he possibly be telling him right now? He's probably going over the, some of the blocking assignments. They were a little bit short on the time clock and wants to make sure here they don't turn it over again and give this team a chance to get into the football game. 
<laughs> Be sure to join Dan Reeves and me each Monday evening at 6.30 for the Dan Reeves Show. This week, see the Broncos as you've never seen them before. We're going to go inside the Broncos locker room before and after the game to show you just what goes on after a typical AFC West shootout. Plus all the highlights and analysis of tomorrow's game against the LA Raiders. It's the Dan Reeves Show, Mondays at 6.30 on KCNC Channel 4, the home of the Denver Broncos. Mitch Berger punting. He's shading his eyes because he's got a very strong sun staring down at him. Almost blocked. Berger gets it away. No flag after Berger gets thrown down to the ground. Harmon with not much of a run back either. Mitch Berger went down after that punt. Evidently, the officials didn't feel that an Oklahoma State player knocked him down. He went down on his own. Well, it's actually coverage by Colorado. I think that's what Bill McCartney was talking about. The Cowboys coming out in their block look. McCartney, after the timeout, saying, make certain you pick up the correct guy. And they almost got that thing blocked. They'll come up the middle, a little stunt. And one of the Cowboys comes completely clean, took an incorrect angle to the football. Otherwise, that thing might have been going backwards. A 40-yard punt by Berger. One second to go in the third quarter. Oklahoma State, the ball in its own 35. Give up the middle, gets nothing. Rodell Guest getting quite a bit of playing time today. Makes the tackle. Cowboys in the punt they almost blocked. Mike Clark, the senior defensive back, is standing up with his hands on his hip. As the ball is snapped, they will move. You'll see Clark come around the corner and he is completely free. If he bears to his left a little bit, he's got the punt blocked. But he came to the left leg of Mitch Berger instead of the right leg. Thus, Berger is able to get the 40-yard kickoff. The Cowboys got exactly what they wanted with the stunt up front. Clark is clean, and yet he doesn't get the block. A much closer game than expected. We start the fourth quarter. CU leading 10-3. CU just took that lead a few minutes ago when Darian Hagan hooked up with his wide receiver, Rico Smith. Oklahoma State with the ball. Second and 10 from the Cowboys' own 35. Ford to a wide open Mark Sheetwood in the bus territory down to the 46 yard line. Eric Hamilton made the stop. Nice, clean, tight spiral thrown by Ford there. An up and down type quarterback. One time will be right on the mark. Next throw, he'll be five yards off. From the Buffs' 45-yard line. See what I mean? Perfect example there of Ford's inconsistency. And usually you expect guys who've been around for five years to step in and be the leader and be the guy that gets the job done. But you're right, Kenny Ford, I think, is most comfortable when he's on the move, when you can get him outside the pocket and he can run the football or make a throw that he likes. But you make him stand in the pocket, and he just doesn't feel at home. Second and 10. And play design for Ford to run it, and he picks up five yards. He knew he was taken off as soon as he stepped back three yards. We talked about Ford out of Port Arthur, Texas. Pretty good football player. They used to be in Port Arthur. Joe Washington of the Oklahoma Sooners. This, the design quarterback draw that he ran once in the first half. Ford has pretty good speed for a kid that size. Six feet, 195 pounds. Third and five. Two wide receivers lined up to the right of four, one down to his left. Over the middle, complete. A nice catch inside the Buffs' 20-yard line by Robert Kirksey. 
Well, this is a good throw and excellent coverage. Chris Hudson almost comes up with the interception. Hudson will come underneath the throw. Hayward has the coverage from the quarterback. But Chris Hudson, watch. He sees this ball all the way and just barely deflects it. And an excellent catch and a good throw. That's a big-time catch there by Kirksey, and Hayward's, Hayward's got him by the helmet, slinging him to the ground. Nice play by the Cowboys. First down for Oklahoma State at the Buffs 19. The pitch went to Rafael Denson, who got it inside the Buffs 15. Down to the 12-yard line, Ronnie Bradford pushes him out. Denson is going to be a great player in this league because he's got the instincts that you simply can't teach. The hesitation allows him to get the blockers turned inside and cut off the CU defense, and then Denson, with excellent speed, just turns the corner. A lot of people call USC tailback university, but they've had a few good ones here. Thurman Thomas, Barry Sanders, Gerald Hudson last year led the Big 8 in rushing. This is Denson again, tries to push the pile. Stopped somewhere between the 9 and 10 yard line by John Knudsen. And here's where the Colorado defense has been extremely tough this year. Opponents have been inside their 20 yard line 24 times. They've given up 13 scores, nine touchdowns and four field goals. And that's where you make your living, so to speak. Once a team gets inside your 20 defensively, you gotta bowl your neck and keep them out of the end zone. Third down, one yard to go. That's Denson again, and he gets it. He has the first down for Oklahoma State, down to the CU six-yard line. These fans on their feet now. Joel Steed kept Denson from getting into the end zone. Here, I think Oklahoma State has got to try to get Kenny Ford outside the pocket somehow on a rollout where he can run the ball or throw the ball. Denson again. Nowhere to go. Chad Brown with his hands around Denson's waist. So you have to figure it's going to be tough to overpower this defense when they get inside the 10-yard line because you're you don't have as much room to work with. And so I don't think you're going to be able to toss sweep against the Colorado defense, even though you've been somewhat successful with that play on this drive. Reddick Denson with three yards on that play, so it's second and goal from the seven. The corner out, touchdown Oklahoma State. Robert Kirksey from the quarterback, Kenny Ford. Tell you what happened. Chris Hudson is man to man on Robert Kirksey, and he gives him two ways to go. As a cornerback, you've got to take away something from a wide receiver at this spot on the field. Kirksey gives him a nice little inside fake, and then look how much room Kirksey has to work with on the outside. A good throw by Kenny Ford to lead him away from the defensive back, and the Cowboys can tie it. And Rick Myers does just that. With 11.41 to go in the ballgame, Oklahoma State ties up the 14th ranked CU Bucks. Oklahoma State lining up to kick off after tying the game at 10. This is Chris Hudson, and Charles Johnson tells him, don't go anywhere, Chris. Just down the ball, and the officials buy it, and the Bucs will start with the ball at their own 20. Well, the Oklahoma State touchdown, you'll see Robert Kirksey inside the bump by Chris Hudson. You've got to take either of the inside or the outside away, but Hudson gets a left-hand jam on him, and Kirksey has already slipped by him to the outside. You've got help inside. You've got nobody to the outside, and you've got to take either the inside or outside away. That time, Hudson couldn't do it, and the Cowboys go 10 plays worth of 65 yards and tie this football game up. And something the Buffs have to worry about besides a charged up Oklahoma State team is a charged up Oklahoma State crowd inspiring this team. Darian Hagan, a gain of one. Eric 
Garvin among the orange jerseys bringing Hagen down. And the Cowboy defense has done a pretty darn good job against this option attack today. After three quarters, CU had but 115 yards rushing. That was one area they thought they could dominate today. Second and nine. Over the middle, Sean Embry makes his first catch of the day. And boy, you notice immediately how much more active the Cowboy defenders are. As they ran onto the field for both the start of the game and second half, they look to be thinking of other things. But now, after Emory catches the ball, bang, hit initially. Then you find somebody else coming in. And you see a lot of orange jerseys around the football. That happens, of course, in a game like this when you haven't won all year and you're 10 minutes away from the biggest victory that you've had in a long time. I think the phrase is psyched up. That's what Oklahoma State is right now. Third and three for the Buffs from their own 28. Sophomore from Altus, Oklahoma, makes the tackle in the backfield. And more trouble for the Buffs because Mitch Berger has to punt into the win. Scott Harmon back to receive the punt from Berger. Harmon averages 8.4 yards of return. It's blocked by Oklahoma State. The punt is blocked by Mike Clark. Boy, that's the exact same play that we talked about when Clark almost got the block on the last kick. This time, Mike Clark on the stump comes free, and he runs right to the right foot of Mitch Berger. when you don't block people come right up the middle. That was too easy. Mike Clark, the all big eight quarterback for the Cowboys last year, has made one of the biggest plays of the year so far for Oklahoma State. Well, usually a guy gets in for the block, it goes off his hand, his fingertips. That ball went off his chest. Take a look, same play, here he comes, right up the middle. Now watch the angle he takes this time, to the right foot. Remember last time he went to the left leg and missed the block. He blocked that thing with his forearms. Oklahoma State with two points on the play. The Cowboys take the lead with 9.45 to go. Oklahoma State 12 and CU 10. And after a safety, the Buffs have their choice whether to punt the ball or to kick off from a tee, and they choose to kick off the tee. Kind of interesting because more times than not, you will punt the football to give your club time to get out. You get more height, but Mitch Berger has had his problems. Plus, you're punting into a fairly stiff win. So I think Berger will try to drive the ball here and kick it between somebody down there and hopefully get a good bounce. Yeah, you're also talking about a kid with an exceptionally strong leg. The Oklahoma State kickoff returners are back at their own 20. And Berger gets a good one off. Fielded at the 12-yard line by Harmon. He gets it up across the 30 to about the 31. Oklahoma State with the lead, 12 to 10, and the ball. Well, you have to wonder, Dave, as you see the Nebraska score, beating Kansas 38 to 23, you have to wonder, even if CU does pull this one out, does it hurt them in the rankings? Do they stay the same? Can they move up? I, right now, I don't know, but I tell you, nine minutes and 40 seconds to go, that's the furthest thing from Bill McCartney's mind. He's got to find out a way, find a way to win this football game. First attempt for Oklahoma State. Marcellus Elder makes sure. I tell you this, Wes, with 9.30 left in county, you'll find out what kind of team Colorado has. You'll find out what kind of club really that Bill McCartney has standing behind him in the sidelines. Because you're playing at club nothing to lose. They're looking for their first win. The crowd is finally excited. They're probably now on the phones calling people in Stillwater saying, hey, we've got a chance to win for a chance. 
You'll find out. We'll know more in nine minutes. Well, Elder held up the two yards on that last play. This time a good rush from Brian Diet. And it'll be third down and eight. This place holds 50,000 plus. It's only about half full, but it sure sounds like 50,000 plus after that safety, after the block punt. Third and eight for Okie State. Ford on a play designed for him to run up to the 38-yard line. He's short of the first down, however. Tried to catch the buff snapping, but it didn't work, and Oklahoma State will punt. And the defense did their part. Three downs and out. You give Hagen and company another chance. You want to give them as many opportunities as you can in the last eight and a half minutes of this game. Vincent to putt, Hagen to return. The low kick will fall in front of Hagen on one bounce. From his own 18. A return of approximately seven yards for Hagen. Ch Chaucer Funches, the tackle. Let's see if that defensive stand is spurred on the CU offense. They're down 12-10. Yeah, you're reading it right. Oklahoma State, a team without a win this year, leading the Buffs 12-10. We've got 8.17 to go in the fourth quarter. The Buffs with the ball at their own 25. Kent Call. Two yards on the play. Brandon Colbert, the stop. Now here's where you'd like nothing against Kent Call, but you'd like a Lamont Warren in the game because he would allow you to stretch the defense. The perimeter defense now doesn't have to worry quite as much about CU getting to the outside. They'll play between the tackles for Kent Call. Hagan. The pass is complete to Sean Brown at the 40-yard line. They've mentioned Lamont Warren not in the ball game. That's because he went off re-injuring his shoulder. Dislocated shoulder he suffered last week. Hagan pulls this thing down. He wants Brown there. Brown is covered, and yet Dar Darian doing a nice job of buying him some time, and what a catch by Sean Brown. He talked about his hands. He's a guy that you want to get the football to. And if you need points in the last seven and a half minutes of the game, I can't think of another quarterback, maybe in the country, that I'd rather have running the offense than Darian Hagan. First down for the bus. This is call. Unable to move the pile, he does get three yards out of it. David Brooks, a tackle. Pat Jones can smell a victory. He hasn't had one all year. The closest Okie State has come is a 6-6 tie with Iowa State. On second and seven, Hagan throws a duck, incomplete. Michael Westbrook, the intended receiver. There's a freshman with a lot of catches in him. This year and three more years for Michael Westbrook. There he is, Pat Jones stalking again. <laughs> and he's still walking, isn't he? This crowd raising the decibel level, a few notches. Third and seven. And Hagen escapes. And picks up the first down. Darian Houdini Hagen. Holy cow. 
wanted to get out of that one. Well, this will be one that Pat Jones will watch and say, talk about a microcosm of our season. Hagan is just engulfed by orange jerseys and pops up like he just came out of the water. Pat Jones said Darian Hagan was the same kind of player as Turner Gill and Mike Rozier and Billy Sims and Barry Sanders. He can dominate a game, and on that play, I don't think you've seen anybody do it better. First down for the bus. 6.15 to go in this ballgame. Kent Call down to the 40-yard line of Oklahoma State. Gain of eight. The kid call, again, between the tackles, runs with tremendous authority. John Francis finally brings him down, but calls about 195 pounds. Strong. Vince Press is over 300. He's got 10 carries for 45 yards. And as an eye back in a lead kind of offense, he does just fine. Second and two for CU. This is James Hill. And he has first down yardage. You know, the last time Oklahoma State defeated a ranked team, it was the 1988 Holiday Bowl. You remember who they beat? Wyoming. The Wyoming Cowboys. I think they scored something like 62 points against Wyoming that day. In this case, with five and a half left, you're going into the win. So you must keep in mind what kind of kicking game you've had this year and the fact that this will be no gimme even if you get it close for Jim Harper. They want a touchdown here. First down at the Oklahoma State, 36. James Hill again. Struggles for two, maybe three yards. Arthur Davis brings him down. James Hill, a gutsy young man, playing with bruised ribs. And a bothersome lower back after the fall he took against Nebraska last week. Did the job there. It's second and seven. Hagan doesn't escape the rush this time. Elmer Williams was there to bring him down. First time we've called his name today. You see, Williams came right up the gut. Hagan never even had a chance, I believe it's Jason Gilton, never even had a chance to set his feet before Gilton was on top of him. Well, if Gilton is given credit for the sack, he now has 13 and a half sacks on the year. Buffs are four for 11 today in third down situations. And right now it's third and 13. Looking downfield, sacked again. Fumble? Are they calling it a fumble? No, they're calling they're calling Hagen down. The CU offensive line not doing the job right now. Bill McCartney's called everybody over. I think you have to kick the ball here. Fourth down at about 15 yards. Three minutes and 24 seconds and counting. You see Pat Jones excited. I don't think there's any question. You got to kick it and hope your defense can hold. You see the pressure. Pretty good protection for Hagen. Backside finally gets to him. Here's the punt by Berger. Nice and high. This is what he wanted. Plus a little bit of a bounce. And CU will down the ball at the 11-yard line. Mitch Berger with a nice punt. Backs up Oklahoma State. But the Cowboys have the lead, 12-10. With 2.58 to go. Precarious situation for Bill McCartney and the CU Buffs. Losing to Oklahoma State 12 to 10. With less than three minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And Oklahoma State has the ball at its own 11-yard line. The fullback, Franks, brought down for a loss. Colorado has two timeouts left. Pat Jones realizes that. You're going to want to run the football here. Even if you're denied yardage, you force CU to make the decision. Do we stop the clock, use those timeouts, or 
do you let the clock run? 22 seconds, 21 20 now before the Cowboys have to snap the football. And Kenny Ford, the senior, should wait and let that clock run down. Still 14 seconds left. Second and 11. Ford with some room to run. Goes out of bounds at the 17 yard line. And boy, that's the kind of play right there that will send Pat Jones through the roof. First of all, Kenny Ford snapped the ball with nine seconds left in the clock. Didn't have to do it. Second of all, although you pick up good yardage, he ran out of bounds. So he stops the clock again. There he should have just sat down, let Wolfork tackle him, and forced that clock to continue. 2.13 to go. This is a big, an understatement, a big, big third down. Third and four for Oklahoma State. Ford tries to run it again. Short of the first down. I'd use a timeout here. If you're CU. Yes. The Buffs have two timeouts left. Oklahoma State has three. And there's a timeout on the field right now. Dave, you hit it on the head. The Buffs do use a timeout. And Bill McCarty has got to feel very fortunate in that series that the Cowboys did not use the clock more wisely. Kenny Ford, when you have nine free seconds to take off that clock, you use them. You also stay in bounds when you're scrambling. We talked about it early. You, you can't win or you have a tough time winning at this level without a proven signal caller, without a guy that makes plays. Pat Jones' team needs to punt the ball away with two minutes and four seconds to go. Oklahoma State, a two-point lead. So keep in mind, a field goal from CU can win this ball game if they can get in the field goal range. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind here. Pat Jones has nothing to lose. This team is looking for their first win. Fourth and two, you want to make certain you stay on sides and you also do not let them shift and pull you off sides. That will give them a first down and might give them the game. The Buffs with a 10-man front going after this punt. And one man back to receive it, Darian Hagan. It's a low kick. Hagan fields it at midfield. And gets it inside the 45. He loses the ball, but the Buffs will keep it because the ground caused the fumble. Everybody at Lewis Stadium on their feet. Oklahoma State going for its first one of the year. Well, Hagan, realizing the CU went for the block, has no blockers, and yet he takes it upfield and gains about nine yards. Valuable yardage at this time, and it gives them nine less yards to have to pick up. If you're wondering, Jim Harper's longest field goal of the year for CU is 50 yards. Hagan to the sideline, out of bounds. Incomplete. He was looking for Michael Westbrook. Boy, Jason Gilden has been in the backfield almost as much as Darian Hagan this afternoon. And Gilden put pressure on Hagan that time and forced him to throw it a little bit before he wanted to. The good news is it stops the clock. You've got plenty of time. The clock, as of right now, is not a factor to you. A minute 49 to go. See you second and 10. Another good rush. Hagan runs into his old man, and he clocks him. Guess who? Jason Gilden. That is his third sack of the day. And Darian Hagan is still down on the ground. Shaken up. Well, Hagan was trying to break out of the pack. The pressure initially, he runs right into Clint Moore. Then spins around. Gilden has great speed. And he got Hagan by the ankle there, and Darian's limping off on that left leg. Gilden has three sacks today. That breaks the school record set by Wesley O'Neill in a tough position for Vance Joseph. Vance Joseph, the sophomore from Marrero, Louisiana, into the ballgame at quarterback. The clock running down, 1.20 to go. Third and 14. Joseph, without a chance to warm up, throws the ball incomplete. James Hill can't hang on. 
Brings a fourth down for CU. It's now or never. By Dave, CU and Bill, Bill McCartney right now staring at a situation that might knock them out of the New Year's Day ball picture if they can't pull this one up. And CU takes its last time out. We're going to keep it right here. A minute 13 to go. CU down by two points. They're in a situation that reads fourth down with 14 yards to go. A backup quarterback in the game, Vance Joseph, because Darian Hagan just came out with an injury. Well, Gary Barnett, the offensive coordinator you just saw talking to Vance Joseph, what the problem has been the last couple of drives, they've been unable to protect the quarterback. So you, you can't really give the team some sort of play that will work if you can't protect the quarterback. You see Darian Hagan sitting down talking to Dave Burton. I would think Colorado might try to draw Oklahoma State off a long snap count of some sort, and then you got to make certain if you're Vance Joseph, you don't eat the ball. you got to get the ball up and give somebody a chance to catch it. A lot of things at stake here right now on fourth down, including a 19-game unbeaten streak in conference. Vance Joseph. As James Hill gets the first down. Hill inside the 30. What a piece of scrambling by Vance Joseph. Unbelievable. Vance Joseph walks off the bench his second play and looks like he's been playing for 30 years. Look at this. Just shoves away one of the linebackers, Eric Gamut. Now has enough presence to look upfield. While he's scrambling, dumps the ball, a perfectly thrown pass. James Hill with the catch for 17 yards and the first down. The clock is running. You forgot to mention he threw up the wrong foot. Oh, my. First down, 50 seconds to go. That time, Joseph not so lucky. Incomplete. But see, that's all right. It, it gives you as an offense a chance to compose yourself a bit. You're running around the last play, all over the place. You finally pick up the first down. You've got everybody out of breath. Now the clock stops. You've got time to settle down a little bit and get the play you want into the game. You see, Vance Joseph, his season numbers, 11 completions, the biggest one of his lifetime took place a play ago. If you're wondering, right now the Buffs are in field goal range. This would be a 46-yard attempt if they had to kick from this spot. Second and ten. More good pressure from Oklahoma State. And again, Joseph throws it into the ground after avoiding a big rush. Thirty-nine seconds to go. The Buffs are out of timeouts. And they are down by two points. You see, Vance Joseph walking back. I can promise you this, he's tired. He's winded. He's trying to catch his wind as he walks back to the huddle. Pat Jones is saying, can I get lucky one time? And Bill McCartney is saying, can we at least get a field goal out of this? Third and ten. Joseph gets it inside the 20, just short of the first down. And in college football, the clock will stop if they want to measure this. Third down situation. We've got an official's timeout on the field. Are they going to measure? Yes. Now, Vance Joseph has to get his players in the huddle and call the next play because after the ball is measured, the referee will again wind the clock. They brought Jim Harper onto the field. Their field goal kicker. They are calling it a first down. I wouldn't kick here. So the offensive unit comes back out quickly. Vance Joseph already over center. 30 seconds to go. And Joseph spikes it into the ground to stop the clock. Let's count downs here, okay? <laughs> oh, my. 28 seconds to go. You see Vance Joseph walking like he just got through running the mile, hands on his hips. Where is the oxygen around this joint? 
Here's a kid that hasn't played much. When you come in and have to scramble for your life on three consecutive plays, you feel like you just ran about 78 flights of stairs. Bill McCartney in the hat, Mike Berry without the hat, the headset belonging to Gary Barnett. Coordinator Gary Barnett. And here's where a head coach will get involved in, in making the decision as to what goes on, or at least say, hey, I want to know what you're calling. Let's go down to the field and Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thank you, Les. I think Bill McCartney is comfortable now where the ball is. A field goal attempt would come from around the 26-yard line, which would make it about a 36-yard attempt into this wind. But I think Jim Harper's got the leg strength that he can kick at 36 yards into this win any further than about the 20 yard line. And I think Bill McCartney would have been concerned that he needed to get the ball closer to the Oklahoma State goal line because this win is pretty strong. Back up to you guys. Well, you see the flag, it is blowing. The wind is blowing into the face of CU's offense. I'll tell you, I agree with Mark that certainly Harper has the leg strength from here, but in this wind, and this year with the narrow goalpost, this is no gimmick. You'd like to pick up about 10 yards here and make it much more simple. You've got plenty of time, even though you're at a timeout. 28 seconds, you've made your kids aware of that fact. They've got to hurry up and get up off the field or off the ground and get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, second and 10, ideally, you'd like to get into the end zone. The clock is ticking. 19 seconds, 17 seconds. We're under 15 to go. They've got to, re they've got to restart the clock. The clock is at nine seconds of counting. The while officials the are over the ball. <laughs> the officials are sitting there gabbing, and the clock is winding down. Is Two this? seconds to go. No time left on the clock. Is this, What's the call? Is this what they call an antsy finger on the timekeeper clock? <laughs> oh. The president of Oklahoma State University working the game clock. <laughs> Well, it's wrong again. There's 48 seconds. When we started, there were 28. So I imagine you've got to get to 28 and then stop the clock. I think they'll stop the clock here at 28 seconds and then allow Colorado to run a play. Hey, when you haven't won a game, if I'm the scorekeeper of the Oklahoma State Cowboys, <laughs> heck, I'm starting that thing too. So we've added two seconds, evidently. And we start with 30. The clock rates 30. And the clock won't start because he grounded the ball last time. Second and ten. James Hill up the middle for nothing. Now you got to get him back at the line of scrimmage, and you've got to throw the football into the ground. And they're stopping the clock again to unpile the players. 22 seconds on the board. Vance Joseph trying to keep everybody calm and reassured. We know what we're doing. And he grounds the ball again to stop the clock. You got to kick it here. 14 seconds doesn't give you enough time to take any chance whatsoever. And that's exactly what the Buffs are going to do. They bring the field goal unit on with Jim Harper at the helm. He is 6 for 11 in field goal attempts this year. Robbie James is the holder. See if Oklahoma State uses one of their two timeouts to freeze Jim Harper. This will be a 36-yard attempt. And Oklahoma State calls a timeout to do exactly that, to make Jim Harper think about it. Oklahoma State leads it 12 to 10. 14 seconds left in the game. See you and Jim Harper about to go for the game-winning field goal. You see Pat Jones. I wouldn't be surprised to see them come back out and call another timeout. They have one remaining. 14 seconds to go. You're not going to have time to win the game if he makes it. On the other hand, if you're Jim Harper, I think he's probably feeling better just being off by himself. A lot of guys don't know how to approach a kicker when the game is on the line. Do you go up and say, hey, come on, you can do it? Do you not say anything to him? Do you just avoid him? I think Harper right now is focused on getting this thing through the uprights. Jim Harper, a senior out of California. Again, he is 6 for 11 on the year, field goal attempts. He's had three of them blocked. Here's a problem for CU, though. On field goals attempted between 30 and 39 yards, Harper is 0 for 4 this year.
this one will be 36 yards. I think the Cowboys ought to get another one here. We'll see. Into a win. And Oklahoma State does call its final timeout. Both teams go to the sideline to talk it over a little bit more. Kind of reminds you in some ways of last week's game in Boulder when Colorado was calling the timeouts. And they called three in a row on a frigid night and then proceeded to block the field goal. The, the difference, Nebraska kicking for the win, the worst they could come out with was a tie. In this case, Jim Harper kicking for the win knows if he misses, his club loses. So much at stake here for CU. The implications are wide-ranging. A third straight Big 8 title at stake. A spot in the New Year's Day Orange Bowl possibly at stake. A spot in any New Year's Day bowl game at stake. There are very few, very few New Year's Day games that will take a team with three losses and a tie and CU right now trying to avoid that situation. They stand 5-2-1 and one on the year. But the most important statistics right now, Jim Harper, a 36-yard field goal attempt that could win the game. They fake it. Robbie James complete to Christian Farin for a touchdown. Unbelievable. What a gutsy call from the CU sideline. Oh, send them all to Atlantic City and let them on the craft table. Unbelievable call by Bill McCartney. And I can promise you, nobody here, including us, thought this would happen. Robbie James, the holder, makes the throw to a wide open Christian Faria, who scampers into the end zone. And shock is not even appropriate. A freshman tight end. Christian Faria out of Northridge, California. He's made two catches this year, both for touchdowns. Jim Harper, on the extra point attempt, hits the goal post. So the extra point is no good. And CU's lead, it really doesn't matter. CU's lead, 16 to 12. Either way, whether he makes the extra point or not, Oklahoma State still has to score a touchdown to win this game. Keep in mind one thing here. This was third down. So if James does not find somebody open and gets rid of the football, the clock is still stopped, and I would imagine Jim Harper then would have kicked the ball. You think Bill McCartney likes this one? Just a couple of claps. <laughs> I told you, boys. Maybe he expected it to work. He's saying, get off the field. <laughs> wow. And Pat Jones has got to be thinking, well, this is just not my year. Third and ten. They disdain a 36-yard field goal and throw a touchdown pass. And when the baseball cap kind of slides up, the bill goes up, you know, that's it. Not a happy man. He came very close to his first win of the year. It's been a successful reign for Pat Jones here at Oklahoma State, except for the last three years, the three years they've been on probation. Prior to that, three straight seasons of 10 wins per season. Can you call that man the Bobby Bowden of the West? <laughs> There's the scoring drive. 10 plays, 43 yards. The biggest play, a fake field goal attempt. <laughs> Robbie James to Christian Faria. I bet Bo Schimbeckler is sliding down in his easy chair, covering his eyes, saying, Bill, Bill, I taught you better than this. <laughs> Mitch Berger squibs the kick. Oklahoma State with the ball at its, only th at its own 30-yard line and just six seconds to go, down by four points. at here is a situation where Oklahoma State's going to throw the ball up into the air, what we like to call a Hail Mary. Every once in a while you see it work. It did work last week in an NFL game between San Francisco and Atlanta. Atlanta won the game on a Hail Mary pass with no time left on the clock. However, 
You're talking about college right now. You're talking about Oklahoma State at its only at its own 30-yard line. The quarterback's going to be another five to ten yards behind, and he doesn't have the arm strength to put this ball up in the air and into the end zone. There it is. And it's going to be picked off by Dion Figures. Dion's second interception of the ball game. A game that ends with CU pulling out a 16-12 victory and raising the record to 6-2-1, 4-0-1 in the conference. I'd like to know who called that fake field goal attempt. I guess he deserves everybody's congratulations for his guts. I'm not sure who called it. We may find out, but I can tell you who okayed it. And that's the guy right there in the middle of your screen. Got a little smirk on his face. I really wish I could I could see Bo Schimbeckner if he were watching this game as to what his reaction would have been when Rodney James raised up and threw the ball. <laughs> Bill McCartney smiling as he comes off the field. It Very looks like, like him. The cat who ate the canary. Yeah, he got the whole bird on that one. Well, a lot of smiles. I wonder how much smiling there will be when they look at the film on Monday and the coaches say, we beat Oklahoma State. But just barely. Well, now the question is, to see you retain its number 14 ranking in the nation, or do they slide down a notch or two? No, they won't slide down. It's a, an important question because at the end of the year, if CU and Nebraska are tied for the Big 8 lead, the Orange Bowl has the option of picking and choosing which team it will take to come down to Miami, and they normally like to go with the higher-ranked team. There's your final score from Stillwater. CU 16-12. We'll be right back to wrap things up. Maybe the play of the year, Colorado looking for the win. Third down and 10. Robbie James, the holder, look at the sellout by the Cowboy defense. And James was a great high school athlete at Strasburg High School to Christian Faria, and the Buffs pull one out here in Stillwater. Well, that's putting it mildly. And the Buffs' streak of 20 straight conference games without a loss continues. So the final score in an incredible finish, CU 16, Oklahoma State 12. The executive producer of today's game is Tom Edwards. Today's game was produced by Terry Trevano and directed by Tom Richards. For Dave Logan and Mark McIntosh, I'm Les Shapiro saying so long from Lewis Field on the campus of Oklahoma State University. This has been a presentation of KCNC Channel 4 Sports, the home of the CU Buffaloes.